Hello! Welcome to our last creation station of the season. And the theme for this month is rainbows, beautiful radiant rainbows. And we have a couple of crafts to do together today. And I'm outside because one of them is a little bit messy, so make sure before you even collect your materials that you have a space to work that uh, can get a little bit messy. So the crafts for today are a rainbow pinwheel. So this um, spins when you blow or when it catches wind and the colors all blend together um, nice and beautifully. And then also making marbled paper using shading cream and food coloring. And so this actually is, it's not quite the way that um, people did it back um, in the Victorian days when the Bixby family lived at the Rancho, but this was something that a lot of people used and made back even in those olden days. So we're gonna throw back to those Victorian days with this craft. So the materials we'll need besides your, your working space that can get a little bit dirty are paper and I just have printer paper and it's kind of some scraps. Um, you want to have a square that's as big as whatever pinwheel size you want to make. And you can make um, a really big pinwheel, but then it takes more air to blow it. So I made a little bit of a smaller one just so it'll blow a little easier. You'll also need uh, markers or colored pencils or crayons, whatever you want to use to add color to the paper. Uh, you'll need scissors. You'll need a pencil that has an eraser. That's how we're going to attach the pinwheel. And a uh, thumbtack for attaching um, the paper pinwheel to the pencil. And then you'll also need food coloring in uh, assorted colors, shading cream, toothpicks, um, aluminum foil, and then something to spread the shaving cream helps. So I actually have this tool that's used for like making cakes. So that's really helpful, even a spoon or a knife, um, something, just make sure it's okay to get shaving cream on it. Um, I also have, this is a container um, that I'm gonna use to put the shaving cream in. Uh, so you can use really anything. Um, you want it to be at least as big as the paper you're going to marble with this technique. Um, you can use like a, a box lid. Um, you can even just use the aluminum foil and kind of make little walls with it since shaving cream kind of holds its shape. Um, but I have this and then paper towels because it is gonna get messy. And then I have right here um, a bucket that's just there for me to put all of this shaving cream trash in. Uh, and then I'm gonna take it straight to my big trash can uh, just cause it does get kind of messy and I don't even wanna take it um, inside the house. So we're gonna start with the pinwheels. For the pinwheels, you're gonna need uh, the pencil, which is gonna be the kind of the pole for it, uh, a push pin or a pin or thumbtack, um, and then paper, something to color your paper and scissors. Um, so you start with a square of paper to make a pinwheel. And the square, again, can be um, really whatever size you want. It's the kind of square that you can see with this pinwheel is the size of paper that I cut. Um, so it's it's up to you how big you want to make it. Um, this this size that I have right here, what I did was just fold over the paper to create a long rectangle, and then you can create a square. I'm actually when you have a rectangle an easy way to create a square is to fold this corner down to the edge like this and then make sure that these edges line up and then you can fold this and that creates a diagonal and then where the end of this paper was, if you cut along that line, then you've created a square. So then when I open this back up, I've created this square shape. And I do actually need a diagonal fold to create the pinwheel anyway. So if you just have a square that you cut, you're going to fold it diagonally once into a triangle open it back up and then fold it diagonally the other way. So your folds create an X across this square of paper. And now you can add color to it. And 
you can see I colored only one side and you end up folding half of it over. So some of the color is just on the back of the pinwheel and then some of it um, ended up in the front. And then I left the other side blank so it's just white space. So you can kind of decide um, how you want to add the color. If you want to color the entire side of the paper on each side and then see how that turns out. Uh, I'll probably do that since I have one that's white on one side. So it's got a, a plainer one and then just a solid color on the other side. So I'll try one that's got maybe solid color on one side and then some designs on the other. And again, when this spins, those colors kind of blur together and it looks pretty cool. Um, so depending what colors you use and the designs, uh, it can create some interesting shapes and designs when it's spinning around. And I'm just going to use going to use this bigger sheet to have underneath as uh, just so my coloring doesn't get on the table. I'm going to use some colored pencils and on one side I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm just going to color each of these triangles uh, a different solid color. So I completed my first side, which is just um, each triangle created by the folds is a different solid block of color. And then on the flip side, I'm just going to do some kind of swirly designs, um, maybe kind of a 90s inspired pattern. Um, and for this one, I'm not really going to worry too much about where each of the triangles is. I'm just going to do a pattern across this whole side of paper. All right, so I finished my pattern on this side and I've got um, those colors on the other side. So now what I'm going to do is cut slits um, to be able to create this pinwheel shape and then fold over the points and then use the um, thumbtack to attach it to the pencil. And I'm gonna switch to a close-up view so it's a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing as I do that. All right, so here's a close-up of my square of paper that I made. So it's got those solid triangles on one side and this pattern on the other. And now we're going to create this pinwheel. So um, we're going to cut slits and then fold, basically. So I'm going to cut from this side. You don't want to cut all the way to the center point because then you'll end up just cutting these triangles out. Um, so I'm just going to use a marker to um, draw a little line for myself. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space. I'm only going to cut from the corner until this marker. Um, so it's about, for me, one of my smaller fingers. Um, depending how big your fingers are, it might just be a regular finger length. Um, and then if you are doing a bigger square, you're just gonna to wanna to make it um, like a proportionally the same. So a bit longer if you've got a bigger square. So now I'm just going to cut from each of these corners to that marker. And I did do this on the side that's going to be, um, this is going to be the back. So I'm planning on folding it over so that this um, pattern is where the white is on the sample. So it's kind of like the background. And then um, similar to this, that solid color will be over. So that's why I don't mind having the markers here because it's not gonna show. So I'm just going to cut each of these. All right, so that part is done and it now um, has these different pieces and it's ready to get folded. So now to put the pinwheel together, you need this square and then a thumbtack and a pencil. And what we're doing is um, the thumbtack is going to go through the paper and then go into the eraser of the pencil like this. Um, and so then the paper will be here in this part and it will be able to spin around. But you do want to be careful because this is sharp. Um, so just be very careful when you're using it to poke through the paper and then poke into this eraser that you're not um, accidentally poking yourself with it. So like I said, I want this to be the back and this to be the front. So I'm going to fold these corners over 
and you're just doing, if you think about these as like little points that were created, you're folding over every other one. So folding one, skipping one. So if I fold this one to the center, I'm skipping this one, and I'm going to fold this one to the center. Skip this one, fold this one, so you can see now that I folded over every other one that looks like the pinwheel shape so again now I just have to get this um, thumbtack to go through each of these and then into the um, eraser of the pencil and so this part is where you want to be careful so I want it to be, you can kind of see. So it's like as centered as possible and then as close to the tip without being um, so close that it'll rip. And then I'm gonna try to do it kind of in the same spot on each of these points. So I've got all of those, I just need to line them up and then go, they'll poke through the center back here. Actually, I can do that even from here. Here's the center, I poke through there. So I already know where that hole is and it's gonna be even easier to guide that thumbtack through. So I'm gonna fold one, two, three, One, two, three, and four. So when they go onto the thumbtack, it'll be kind of backwards. So this last one, and then the next one, all the way. So now I've got all of those on the thumbtack and I'm gonna now feed that through the hole I made in the center so it comes out the other side. And you don't want to fold these completely flat but I am going to squish them a little bit just so the paper isn't trying to open up um, and then kind of pop itself off of the pencil. So I've squeezed these a little bit um, but the reason you want it to still have this loop is that this little pocket is what the air will hit to spin your pinwheel. So if you fold it too flat, the air can't get in there, so it won't spin. And so the very last step is to poke your thumbtack into the pencil eraser and going in kind of as straight as possible. And so now you've got it where it will spin. And you might have to move it around a little bit, see, if it spins more, if it's a little looser, or if it's a little bit tighter. Um, but here's your pinwheel. And so you can try it. Again, the wind will go into these little pockets. So you can blow on it or put it outside. Um, you can see if it's a little bit looser. If it uh, blows. So there's a couple. One that's got this pattern, the one with the blank. And again, you can make these um, bigger or smaller uh, it's really up to you and just always be careful when you're using the thumbtacks because they are sharp and you don't want to hurt yourself now that you've made a pinwheel or two it's time to go to our messier craft uh, marble paper and so for this you are using shaving cream and food coloring to create this marble design on paper and so the, the shaving cream is acting almost like a paintbrush, like you use a paintbrush to put paint on a paper. So this is like the paintbrush that's getting the food coloring onto the paper. And the cool thing about shaving cream marbling is you can reuse the same design that you create multiple times. So here I have four different pages that I made with the same um, shaving cream creation. And, um, so here I have the, the first one I did and the fourth one. So you can see you lose a little bit of the detail on this side, um, but you still get a lot. And so 
you can keep reusing, you can reuse it and just add more colors. So it's really up to you. Um, but again, it is a kind of a messy one. So that's why we're outside. And I've got my bucket here for trash and paper towels. So those are gonna be very important. I'm using this kind of tray. Um, it's a shallow tray as um, the kind of container that I'm going to put my shaving cream into. Um, so it is about the size of a sheet of printer paper. It's a little bit too small, but I'm okay with that. Um, and you can use printer paper if you have cardstock or watercolor paper that are a little bit thicker. That also works. Water watercolor paper actually works really well because it's made to absorb color. Um, but I've also got some construction paper, so you can really do this with all kinds of paper. And if you want to do bigger paper, you can use a bigger container than this one, or even just put the um, aluminum foil down uh, in a bigger area um, because it doesn't really, it's not a liquid that's going to spill everywhere. So just making sure that you keep it in the area that's okay to get messy, but you can um, get creative with how you want to contain your shaving cream. So since I'm using this tray, I'm going to put the aluminum foil to cover it. And that's really just for an easier cleanup. Um, if you have a tray that you don't mind getting messy, um, you don't actually even need the aluminum foil step, uh, but I like to do it because then when I'm done, I just pick up the aluminum foil and then put it into the trash. So easy cleanup this way. And I'm gonna put another piece, not because it needs it, but just because I tore it over here. Um, so I'll cover that up. All right, it is ready now for the shaving cream. So it's got the aluminum foil here. Um, and I just have the original Barbasol. It's just like that foamy white uh, shaving cream. And it doesn't have to be super thick, but you do want enough to cover the whole area. So I'm gonna do it about like that. Um, and again, because it's not liquidy, it's not, um, gonna spill too easily, which is nice. I'm already using it. Uh, so this is not a flat surface though. You can probably tell um, it's got the lumps from uh, spraying it out. So whatever tool you want to use to kind of flatten this, you can use a ruler, a spoon, a knife, or if you have this, it's like a frosting spatula. Um, you just want to kind of flatten this out so that it is kind of a level flat surface for your paper. And it is, it does look a little bit like frosting even when you're doing this. All right, so I've got that, that's pretty smooth. Got actually kind of a, hole okay i had a hole in the center so i went back and covered that um if you do have little bumps that's okay but if you have like a big hole that just means that when you put the paper down that won't touch it so it won't get any of the color on it uh and again this is my trash bucket right now so this is the kind of fun part where you can just use the um food coloring to create a color pattern and you are going to be swirling it with the toothpicks so for this part I don't worry too much about exactly where all these dots are going I usually just try to get kind of an even spread of all of the colors and then they get swirled together in really interesting ways so I'll start with the yellow And the cool thing is like, as it comes out, some of these dots are small, some of them are bigger. And so that will create cool patterns as it gets swirled as well. And then red. It's 
So it's fine to have white space, but I do try to kind of spread things as evenly as I can um, so that there's kind of an even spread of colors. But if you want to have a little bit more white space or more of a pastel, uh, you can do fewer food coloring drops with more white space and see how that looks. And my green is running a little bit low, but that means that it's giving these really small drops that are coming more from a spray than a drop like the others. And then I've got blue as my last color. All right. And before I go to the next step, I'm just gonna clean up what I got on my hands. And then I got a couple sprays. Uh, food coloring does stain really easily. So I do try to clean it up as I see it spills so that it doesn't leave a stain there. I think that's everything. So here I've got this uh, shaving cream with a bunch of food coloring dots. And so now I'm going to use a, a toothpick to swirl these around and I will go to the closer up view so you can kind of see how that works. Well, here we have the sort of landscape, the canvas, if you will, that I created with the shaving cream and the food coloring. So I'm just gonna use this toothpick to swirl it around and you can do um, more like longer lines if you want and see how that looks. Um, I kind of like to go to a little area and then do just like a spirally swirl and then just kind of move it and do a new spirally swirl somewhere else. You can also try this with fewer colors, even just with one color looks really cool as well. And as it gets mixed with the white of the shaving cream. All right, so I think that looks um, good. That's how I want it. So I don't need my toothpick anymore. And now the next step is to transfer it onto paper. So I'm gonna start just with printer paper. And this is just about the size, my paper is a little bit bigger, but I'm going to try to put this down so it fits just inside. And then I just want to make sure that the whole surface of the paper ends up touching the food coloring. And you don't want to like smash this down really hard because then you'll squeeze the food coloring out the sides or sorry, the shaving cream out the sides, but you do just want to lightly um, kind of pat it. And with this white paper, you actually can really see that this food coloring is touching it. If you're using a, a thicker paper, you might not be able to see that, but just go around, really make sure you tap down like every part of the paper. And then once you feel like it's uh, it's touched everything, it's even, just peel this off. And so I'm gonna put that to the side. So here is my paper and it does still have a little bit of shaving cream on it. So I'm just gonna get this uh, paper towel and scrape it off. And there it is, I've got one done. And so I'm just gonna wipe down the table very quickly uh, before I do the next one. But if looking back at the shaving cream, you can see on the shaving cream, there's still plenty of food coloring left. Um, so I'm going to do another one just with this same um, canvas. And this time I'll do it with a piece of construction paper. So it's the colors will show up a little bit differently on a colored background. Uh, so it's just a matter of like seeing how it turns out, but it's the same strategy. And so with this one, I can't see through the paper uh, to see for sure that the food coloring is touching it. So with this one, it's just really important that I go 
around the whole paper. And actually some of it is peeking through a little bit. Um, but just getting like every corner, every side, this whole middle part. Just kind of a padding motion. Right, so now this one seems ready. So I'm gonna get this corner and just lift it up. And here's our second one. So I've got shaving cream, especially along the edges. Just gonna wipe that off. Need a new paper towel. All right. So here is that same shaving cream design on a white background and a blue background. So you can really do this with any color paper, any color food coloring, um, and you can make all sorts of creations. These, you could use this if, if you have um, something very small or if your paper is bigger, you can use it as wrapping paper, which is how um, families used it sometimes in the Victorian days or you can use it as kind of the cover of a little book if you want to make a book. There's so many different possibilities. You can even just frame it and put it on the wall because it does make some kind of cool looking art. And I made two just now. This shaving cream still has lots of color so I could even make more. Um, and so I'm just going to quickly show you um, a close-up of what it looks like with just maybe one color uh, so you can see kind of the difference. Alright, so I have a new canvas of shaving cream ready and for this one I'm just going to use one color and I'm going to do blue since that's my favorite color. And it's the same idea, still just going to make some dots kind of spread around. Uh, but it does create its own kind of pattern with these smaller dots and bigger drops. And get another toothpick. And just start swirling around. And again, if you want to create more of like longer lines, for me, I like these kind of smaller, more circle shapes a little more just to kind of pick up all of this color and then go back through some of these white spaces bring some of the white in so you can see even with just one color it creates this very cool design And it's okay to have some spaces of white. I am kind of trying to spread the blue around, but it makes an interesting effect to have some of these spots that have this like darker solid blue, and then some of these spaces that really still have the white, and then these other spaces that are various levels of color mixed. All right, so I think I'm ready. I'll do first on white paper. So same thing, put it down and then just gently pat it all the way around the paper. And again, not pushing down too hard because I don't want to like squeeze any uh, shaving cream out like a tube of toothpaste up the side but um just like a gentle pressure you know, like padding tapping down i think that's pretty good so i'm going to peel it up from this corner all right and this one has a little bit more of the shaving cream that came off with it which is fine Um, but since there's a little more shaving cream with this one, I'm going to try um, just kind of patting off these bigger 
blobs rather than um, like rubbing it just so I don't smear any of the color that might be underneath. And then now that I've gotten off those um, larger clumps of the shaving cream, now I'll wipe it down like I did with the other ones. And again, I got some on the table, so I'm gonna get wipe that up as well. So here is my one color. It's called monochromatic. Mono means one, chroma means color. Uh, so my monochromatic marbled paper. Um, and I still think it looks really cool. I almost like this even better than the uh, more colorful one, but just to see them next to each other. So lots of options with your marbled paper and with your wheels. Thank you so much for joining me uh, for this virtual creation station and all of the virtual creation stations we've had this past season. They can all be found on Rancho Los Ritos' YouTube and Facebook pages in case you missed any and want to go check those out. Creation Station will be on hiatus throughout the summer, um, but stay tuned because it will be back in October. I hope that these pinwheels and this marble paper has brought some color uh, and rainbows into your life. And I hope that I'll be able to see you at Rancho Los Cerritos virtually or in person soon. Thanks.